Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us again for another great episode of Radar Radio with your boy, Mike Lee, also in conjunction with The Mike Lee Show. And today we have an incredible, incredible movie producer here. His name is Jesus, and he is has an incredible movie out called Suicide Saint. Suicide Saint. Suicide Saint. And it's about mental illness, correct? Yes. One of the big themes of the film is addressing mental health, and then there's yeah. another theme about uh, absent fathers. Okay, awesome. We're gonna get into uh, into that a little bit later, but how are you, man? How you been doing? Good, good. You know, all things considered. Great, great. How have you been dealing with this with this uh, COVID-19, this pandemic? How has it impacted you? Um, professionally, it hasn't, it hasn't been too much of a change on my, on my work or my process. Um, I've been working a lot from home already anyway, because I've been doing research and writing for this for this film uh for mm -hmm. the last year and a half but personally um you know we definitely lost uh some some loved ones some friends and and family yeah. members to, Sorry uh, to hear that thank you to coronavirus so it's definitely real um you know don't 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 make it a, a, a political issue don't be fall into the hype just wear your mask it's not going to kill you to wear a mask but it could kill you if you don't mm -hmm. uh, practice social distancing and whatever other precautionary measures. I feel it's important that we, we be more considerate to other people and stop being so selfish. And what we think is, uh, I don't know, some people some people hate to get into this like right off the bat early. But oh no, man, because we're living in this world right now yeah. and you've experienced it in your family. So I'm grateful that you're actually um, allowing us to hear this from you. Yeah, I th but I think, I think um, in terms of um, how we're addressing our 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 liberties, right? I see a lot of people complaining that oh, this this is this is taking away my my liberty to uh, mm -hmm. I can't be forced to wear a mask, and I, and I don't think this is about um, any social control at all. It's all about safety, and it's all it's, and it's about you know science and medicine and, and common sense, right? When they had the, the Spanish flu and it killed millions of people. Um, you know, back then they were like, if you don't wear a mask, we're just going to lock you up. Right. So I think we've, we have a lot more liberties and sensitivities now and people are abusing, um, their, their personal rights because you have to understand that you live in a society with other people. So Absolutely. everything can't just be about what you think we're is all your sharing personal the planet. Right. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, you can't just be about, oh, your personal right and your liberty. And, and no, it's like it, to a certain degree, but you know, the construct of society is that you have to do for the greater good of what, you know, of the collective, right? We're, it's not about this individual, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's about how you serve society, you know, not do, do not what I want my country, but what I'm gonna do for my country, right? As exactly. I which president who, who, who uh, then will get killed on history. <laughs> a whole other segment. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? But it's exactly. like, we, we gotta, we gotta, uh, we, we, we have to be considerate of, of each other. Of, of doing things that have the best interest of all of us. Absolutely, absolutely, because we're all, we're sharing this whole, this planet together, man, absolutely. Yeah, they, um, yeah exactly, we're sharing the planet, like you said. Absolutely, where you, uh, let, tell us a little bit about you, uh, where you from and, and where you grew up. Uh, mostly in, in New York, uh, in and around New York. I've traveled to other parts of the country when I was younger, uh, spent some time in Houston, Texas. Um, my, my mother and a, a lot of my family's from South America, from Uruguay and uh, Brazil. Um, but, you know, through and through a New Yorker, um, I opened the first film studio in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I had production offices and facilities in other boroughs. Um, but, yeah. How long have you been filming and into to film? When did you get started? I, I'm almost, almost 20 years. I got started in 2002. Uh, and I started out with a, a local public access TV. You're telling program. your age and you look very young. Ah, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm 40, 41. <laughs> yeah, you, I wouldn't have called it at all. Great yeah. job. Yeah. yeah 79. Um, uh -huh. 
Yeah, so um, I started I started uh, my first production eye on it, which was a show on public access to provide um, a platform for local artists. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. As you, you you as a director and producer, describe the type of movies that that your brand is about. What do you what are, what is your message? What do you push? What um, is your what is social your impact? To, through, through and through, all, all the content that I create, whether it's a, a music video or a short film, uh, and, and anything that I can get my hands on that I can send a, a message to society that helps address a, an ill of society or an issue uh, that needs to be amplified. Um, so, you know, I've done a lot of content around gun violence prevention and actually founded a, an, a, a nonprofit in 2005 called Guns for Cameras. Um, where we were taking guns off the streets and giving kids video cameras. Um, mm -hmm. Up until last year, I started the, uh, my, my latest iteration of, of my philanthropic efforts was a film school called the SIC Film School. And the SIC is SIC, which stands for Social Impact mm -hmm. Content. So throughout all of my um, projects, the, the, the singular thing that kind of, and, and I, I guess I didn't realize is as I was accumulating uh, my, my work and, and, and portfolio and resume, but they had a, a premiere for me last year at the Newark International Film Festival mm -hmm. where they showed five of my uh, films, different types of films, and, uh, narratives, music videos, whatever, com mm -hmm. commercials uh, from the last 10 years uh, with a theme all around social impact. And, and I hope to inspire other filmmakers to take more responsibility in, in the messaging that they create in their, in their pieces. Excellent, excellent. Why is it important for you um, to tell your message, your story. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's the the struggles that I've connected to and identified in society, and feel like there's a, a way that we can uh, address them, or or or, or kind of or just focus on the ones that are under addressed. You know, I'm always rooting for the the underdog, and, and mental health is a, a big underdog because it's not talked about enough, and it's one of the most pervasive things that affects everybody, regardless of your social class, your ethnicity, uh, we all deal with mental health. And in the US, half of adults, 46%, have to deal with mental illness at some point in their life, uh, suicide specifically. Suicide rates have increased 30% in the last two decades. You know, for coronavirus, some 300,000 people have passed in the last six months. But um, for suicide, 800,000 people kill themselves every year. Mm. So. Um, and one, one person every 40 seconds. So as we've been on this call, how long we've been on the call, you know, like probably 20, so around, around 20 people killed themselves. So oh, it's, wow. it's something that we're just not, um, as a society, we're, we're, we don't have enough uh, uh, focus or advocacy on it. And it's mm -hmm. not just about the severe illness. It betters everyone's way of life, right? We, we've tuned into, you know, financial health and physical health and, you know, uh, clean eating and all these other areas of our lives, but your mental health, it, it regulates every decision, every interaction, every second, every conversation of your day, uh, your, your commu the way you communicate with family, friends, coworkers, um, you know, whatever your station in life is, is absolutely affected by your, 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 your ability to balance and control your emotions, to react to your perspective on situations. Um, these are all things that are, are uh, within the, 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 the means of how um, much that we're, you know, giving personal attention mm -hmm. um, and, and focus and development on our individual mental health to be, to be better people and, and, and to think more rationally. And, you know, there's things like just meditating, you know, your, your brain is like a muscle. The more you you work on it, you can condition your mind um, mm -hmm. to serve you better. Why did you want to tackle, or why did you tackle this story, uh, this mental, through mental, through your film, Mental Illness? Why did you tackle that? And have you done this before? Uh, I haven't addressed mental illness before. And when I, when I started this film, making the film, the, 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 the pre-production of writing the script, Last year, I spent I took off of everything and, and spent the entire year um, just doing research and traveling around the country, seeing how mental health 
impacts different aspects of society. So from going to methadone clinics in Baltimore to see how it affects um, drug addiction, uh, you know, how, you know, the, the, the relationship between mental health and, and substance abuse uh, to even an organization in Connecticut called the Jordan Porco Foundation, which deals with suicide amongst college students. And, you know, even there, um, I met such a, a passionate team of, of founders that we ended up uh, partnering up and they're, and they're one of the main causes that we're uh, promoting uh, beyond the, the scope of this film and, and our marketing efforts, right? So this is an organization that we're gonna donate proceeds from the soundtrack and you know, marketing and PR and other things um, help to spread more awareness around the solutions they're providing. But, but mental health is, is, I didn't realize how much um, it impacted every facet of society until I started doing the research because a lot of the numbers people, you, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't fathom how, how bad it is and how, um, but also on the other end, how, how treatable it is, right? 80% 80, 80 of people to go to get help uh, are the, the treatment is successful, whether it's therapy or, or prescription drugs or, you know, um, and it doesn't just have to be the science. It could be, you know, a combination of the science and, and medicine and the faith, right? Like, like people who, who are, are kind of lost souls and, and, and need to have something to, to believe in, you know, faith helps tremendously on your, on your psyche and it helps on the, the energy and the universe. Um, but, you know, less than 40% of people actually go to get help, right? So we have more than 60% of people not doing anything about their condition which is really sad and unfortunate. And a lot of that comes through uh, the stigma that's around mental health. Um, you know, the narrative that's created in, in film and in Hollywood, they've been very irresponsible on how they, they address uh, and how they frame and how mental health looks on, on film. Um, and, and, you know, just people don't want to be vulnerable, right? They, they, they look at being honest and transparent as like a sign of, of weakness and they don't want to show any of their flaws and this becomes a problem through social media because we're we're a, a slave to this this vanity right to this mm -hmm. idea that we have to show that one millisecond of our day that we're like the happiest even if you're out with dinner with somebody and you could be having a miserable time it's like oh let me just take a picture of the food or right, right. In the club and they go to the table and they take a picture next to the bottles, not even their bottle, not even their table. Right. They're not even living that fly. Right. Like you're creating this illusion. We always want to make things look better than they are. They are and yeah. then that becomes, you know, the, this false reality to everybody else who's at home comparing themselves to, to constantly comparing themselves mm -hmm. to other people's lives. So it's, it's, it's become a real problem and, and not allowing us to be honest because if we all threw our problems you know, in, in, in the pile, when you realize everybody else's problems, you'd be quick to take yours back and you would right, appreciate exactly. more of what you have. Um, let's talk about the movie. Finally, we get to um, to this yes. movie. Um, just give us a little bit of insight into this uh, this movie. Yeah, the, the, the film is, um, it follows these two characters. Yeah. It, uh, Vincent Cross, who's played by a gentleman from Newark, New Jersey, um, who goes by Aviator. He's also a musician and an entrepreneur. He has a, a clothing brand uh, called Aviator Flyboys. Mm -hmm. um, so he, pl he plays one of the leads, and then the other lead is played by Andrew Jacobs, who was the star of Paranormal Activity, and he plays a character named Thomas Metal. So they, they're, they're respectively going through their own uh, issues relative to traumas that happened in their life that we you know, kind of unfold and, and realize throughout the film, Cross is battling schizophrenia and has hypervigilance and metal deals with uh, an identity crisis and PTSD. Um, very, very complex, a lot of layers and the, and the creative and the metaphors and the, the kind of symbolism. Um, there is, the film is an entire uh, visually immersive experience into the um, uh, emotional um, kind of you, you feel what the characters are feeling the way uh, we plan on on shooting it um, mm -hmm. 
you know, with, with the sound and the music and the lighting and mm -hmm. all, all these different elements. We're trying to create this immersive experience so you understand uh, what it's like to, to hear voices in your head. And wow. yeah. you know, the way we have, uh, you know, the hallucin hallucinations show up as very um, uh, original and, and, and something that's never been done uh, on film before. So a lot, of, a lot of innovative stuff on how we're approaching the actual wow. production, the marketing, um, you know, some of the relationships, uh, how we're trying to, to change the, the protocols of Hollywood and, and you know, introduce this uh, idea of art over algorithms. I love it. I love uh, it. Send, send, me, send me your size. I, I got a shirt it. for you. I sure, I sure uh, will. Love that shirt, man. Yeah, but, you know, this idea of art over algorithms that we should be creating content um, for its artistic merit and not on its you know, profitability. Right. Um, yeah. Why don't you, how did you come up with that name? Um, I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember if it came yeah. to me in, yeah. in, in, in a dream it, uh, or, you know, I do a lot of lucid dreaming. I, I, I like to re like really uh, connect to my su subconscious mind because I feel like we're all born with infinite knowledge and, you know, anything that we need, we can, we can access when, again, mental health, when you, when you train and, 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 and program your mind mm -hmm. uh, to, benef to benefit you, right? Not to react to everything, right? Uh, but to kind of prepare and strategize and, you know, you know, like Tupac, when he came out of jail, like he hit the ground running because he was, I don't know if it was, he was locked up for a year, he read Machiavelli and he was like, like he totally um, tuned in to his, his, his power, his presence, his, Mm -hmm. talent and um but he record like 700 songs before before he passed. Boy, that's crazy but that's but incredible. you know the, the name I don't know where it came to me but for me it felt really powerful because it's this juxtaposition between you know somebody who, who you would think commit suicide is in, mm -hmm. in, in religious terms is deemed as a sin or you know for taking right, right, life yeah. ungodly uh and then the saint is like the the opposite extreme of that but I, I feel like um, and nobody should be judged in, in society, right? Every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. And no matter what you do, there's always opportunity, you know, if you're, if you're blessed with another day to, to turn things around or to, or, or to do things differently. So we should never be, you know, this, this cancel culture that's going on in our society now is kind of indicative of all the other bullshit that we've kind of come accustomed to and been promoting and pushing and, Mm. Um, you know, being so polarized and divided, like we need to do away with that. I want every Chinese restaurant shaken down in Harlem. It's more than just takeouts. What else is it? See, brother, the plan is not about how much money we make right now. The more crime we do, the lower is the property value down. In the meantime, we eliminate the competition. When we're ready to build, we stop the crime, hike the prices up, we control the market. Oh, you just a delivery boy. You got some fortune cookies? How do you say dim sum? Lights out. What the fuck is this? It's you down. Welcome to the Asian mob, bitch. Down everywhere. If 
you could do anything different in your life, what would you change? Uh, nothing. I, right. I wouldn't do anything different. You know, being being shot up, being whatever, like all all the different adversities, mm -hmm. I, I would never change anything because they they. I, I think as an artist, adversity is so necessary, mm -hmm. and you know, certain people can you know, cry and complain and gripe about whatever. But if, if you're an artist, it, it, you don't have the same soul without, without the pain. You don't have the same emotional texture in your work without, without the struggle, right? Mm -hmm. Like ignorance is, is bliss. I mean, you don't like really ex experience and feel something. How can you create something that's going to resonate with other people that connects to, you know, something in them. So I wouldn't trade in, in, in none of my struggles. Um, and it, it also ha gives me a greater appreciation for every little thing in life, right? Because I have so many uh, valleys, uh, so many dips, I enjoy all the, all the highs, so. Now, um, I did read about that. You were, sh uh, at one point, you almost lost your life. We're, we're lucky to be looking at you. Um, how did you overcome that? How did you get through that period in your life? Um, faith, that, you know, faith, faith that gives you, um, strength that you 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 can't imagine like you it's uh it's not something that, that that's tangible and it's not something that's, that's dependent on anything else right there's there's no conditions to it um some people think that you know money gives them happiness or material things or dependency on other you know their emotional connection with somebody else but when you can go when you can find a source of faith within yourself that's powerful than anything else um in, in, in the universe, in our existence, right? And, and faith is um, the source of love, right? Like love overcomes mm -hmm. all things. So when you have a love of self and the love of God and you have a faith, um, and that faith doesn't have to be with, packaged within the de denomination of a specific religion. I'm not right. talking about man-made cultures. I think religion is, is positive for society and for, for people beyond the, the, the views of some of looking at it as, as a negative construct and control but i think just in itself the energy that it creates and the love and the and the, the focus on family and community um are all beneficial um regardless of how some people in power might abuse religion and create you know wars and division or or um some people actually you know within the churches uh create some you know uh, do some atrocities towards people like that that's not the fault of the religion that's the fault of man right mm -hmm. man will take anything and, and, and abuse it they'll take mm -hmm. um, they'll take power they'll take money it, they'll abuse it that's not the, the fault of the money money you need money to exactly yeah to, to, to eat to, to to live to you know like the, you know faith is, is something that it's beyond religion it's it's your personal relationship with god regardless of your religion and i think um no matter what you go through, that, that's something that can always serve you uh, in every in every circumstance. Mm -hmm. When people see your movie, what do you want them to walk away with? Uh, I, I would love for them to walk away with um, compassion for other people that are dealing with mental illness. Uh, I would love for them to identify an issue that they might be going through that they haven't realized, oh, my whole life I was bipolar and I didn't even realize this is why it's messing up my relationship with whoever. And then because once you find the, 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 the problem, it's, then it's easier to find the solution, right? You know, once, once you get the diagnosis, then you can apply the, whatever, you know, the medication of, if it's actual medicine or right. therapy or whatever, whatever it is, how you changing and regulating your behavior uh, I would also like for people to, um, for society to to change. What do What do I say already? The, the people's, you know, compassion for others, mm -hmm. um, them recognize something with themselves, and then as society, just kind of changing the, the the stigma around mental health and um, increasing the conversation, and also for just lovers of cinema seeing a, like this is going to be my masterpiece so seeing something that's executed at such a high level the the film the genre of the film is like this this blend between sci-fi super spiritual psychological mm -hmm. drama um so just seeing this you know artistic masterpiece that creates these different visual elements in a way that we're using um 
the lighting, the, 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 the cinematography. So beyond it just having a you know, positive message of, of social good, mm-hmm. just also appreciating the, the entertaining value of it and these you know, iconic characters that I, that I build on and, and create these worlds around. Excellent. What's next for you, Jesus? This, just, just, just this. I don't, I don't, uh, well, I gave you a sneak peek into the future. After this, late next year, we're going to be doing a movie on Hector Camacho, okay. which, which I'm excited about. But I always like to just focus on the very next thing and, and make um, this the best uh, project that I can do. We're, we're not filming till October, so we're doing the fourth quarter of this year, mm-hmm. um, October, November. And anybody in the, in the tri-state area, we're also going to be filming in L.A., but the our first part of our shoot in October is going to be in Jersey. We're shooting in Newark. Mm-hmm. Um, so any of your followers, if they're on the East Coast, look, I'm all about giving access and opportunity to people in the industry. If you're already in the industry, you have tremendous credentials, great. But I don't base um, hiring people or working with people on, on that alone. You know, same way I feel about art over algorithms, I feel about you know, talent over credentials. And, you know, sometimes you have to do what your, your first thing is before you get that to that level of credentials. So um, I'm always looking for new talent. So anybody that, that follows you, that needs an opportunity or wants access to the industry, whether I hire you on this film or whether I just connect you with somebody in general in the industry, please, you know, shoot me a DM on, on Instagram. I do answer my messages. I do get back to everyone. And, you know, I want to help others. And then if you have any, you know, big people who, in the industry to want to help me out if they do have awesome. clout and they're a big artist or a lister or whoever and they're passionate about mental health um you know please by all means use your power or your platform to you know amplify what what we're doing as as a film uh you know we're we're adding on a bunch of big people to the soundtrack of the film 100 percent of the proceeds great. from the soundtrack we're donating to charities that are involved with the film and yeah we just, just want to make dope art and and uh inspire people. Now, uh, we were going to let you go, but we can't because you've opened up a whole new bag of worms. And I got to touch on this, the score, the soundtrack, because if you're dealing with these sort of special effects and these the lighting and all of this stuff that explains what these feelings are about, then what is the music going to oh. support that? And who's, who's the producers or producers on that? Because scoring a movie is probably the most important thing no, yeah, it's, it, it, it's everything. Like the, the, the film, the, 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 the picture just gives you the information, right? It, it, you know, who the character is. What right, the is. right. Like the entire emotion of what you're supposed to feel that person is feeling or what the, you're feeling or he's, the, you know, the environment is feeling. You know, like the entire emotional context is a, a thousand percent come from the music right you know most people i didn't go to film school but everybody who goes to film school who knows or people who study like the music totally tells you what to feel yeah well there's a famous there's a famous you know not a picture there they put two the pictures side by side and and it's and it's the same image right and the the guy's just making kind of like a whatever face Uh and they you know they play with one music and they ask the class you know what what was the guy then they're like oh yeah he was he was laughing every everybody yeah he was laughing then they, you know, cut to something else. They bring the image back. It's the same image, but mm-hmm. they played it with different music, and people didn't realize it. Like, oh, what's he doing now? Oh, he's crying. Then they put them side by side, and you, you, you literally the same exact thing. You can interpret it in an entirely different way. Yeah. So, you know, but this is so layered in terms of um, the the emotional resonance and the response that we want. The, the the music is profound to this project, and I haven't lined up, you know, everyone. Um, Involved. I, I, I'm definitely having Silence, he's the producer named Silence, uh, on board on the project because he scored Asian Mob, the entire film of Asian Mob. Awesome. Uh, but I let him know for Suicide Saint that we might have some other collaborators. Uh, yeah. Um, gotcha. The other day, uh, I, I don't want to throw out names early because we we still making moves and doing agreements, whatever. But the other day, I spoke to uh, Stephen Dent. He's going to work on a uh, project. He's a award-winning engineer. Um, he worked with, with Puff, and, and a lot. We, we have a, also have a partnership with Puff's, uh, the Sean Combs Foundation, um, to provide opportunities to the youth at Capital Prep in Harlem. Um, Memphis Bleak is joining the, the project. Uh, he's gonna do something on, on the soundtrack himself with one of his artists, maybe casting over somebody from his label. Um, but we're talking to a lot of other 
a big artist that I don't want to let out the bag right now that um, we're going to be dropping some tracks later this summer and in the fall uh, even while we're in pre-production this year because we have um, the uh, endorsement from the UN I don't, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier but the United Nations is endorsing the, this film awesome. that's uh, absolutely great yeah they, they, it's, it's phenomenal they have, they're doing a 40 day Safer City program where they pick one organization around the world to represent each one of those days and we're going to be day number 20 and are the only film in the world being uh, included in this initiative uh, and our day falls on October 10th which is World Mental Health Day so everything just coincides perfectly but uh, thanks for asking about the soundtrack that's just going to be really important so any of your listeners look if you're up and coming and you're like just new beat makers whatever hit me up uh, I love to hear new stuff I love to check out new talent awesome. I mean you got you got to be talented like right you're talented and, 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 and you got the and you got that thing um I want to work with you. I, I, I don't care if this is your first one out. Let's, let's work. Excellent. Do you have a website or, or you've got your social media website, Facebook? Can you share that with all of our listeners so people can kind of walk through the process with you of the movie and um, and also contact you if they need? Yeah, absolutely. I can. Um, if you want, if I can just call it out, or I can do a quick screen share to show the. Uh, either, either way, yeah. Let me uh, pull it up here. This is the beautiful thing about, oh, I don't, I, I'm disabled from sharing. You're kidding me, really? That's okay. Uh, it's, it's just, it's uh, H-E-Z-U-E-S-R uh, dot com. That's my website and that's all my social media. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter is all at Jesus R. H-E-Z-U-E-S-R. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm um, I don't I don't check the message all the time on you I don't know if it's YouTube the other ones but like Instagram uh, if you send me a DM there I'll get back to you excellent excellent anything else you want to add before you leave uh, no man this this was a, a very uh, enjoyable conversation I appreciate your, your your intention to highlight things like this and, and get the this kind of information out to people in your in your network and on your platform and I hope people stay tuned um to check absolutely. out side saint you know just if absolutely you see, if you see stuff just post it repost it talk about the film um you know help bring us more more attention and awareness to to get this thing out there absolutely man it was a great interview on you tonight i wish you uh, so much success on your projects and i can't i actually can't wait to see it i want to see the now the I want obviously I can't you know, I'm saying i want to see the special effects i want to hear the music <laughs> but i i want to see the movie I want yeah. to see what you created and what this story is about and how it relates to how we all feel and uh, about mental illness because uh, you know only lately have I been uh, able to not experience it myself. We all, I say we all have it. It's just what layers, you know. Maybe in your life here you're at, you know, zero point five percent, and then yeah. something happens and you go to twenty percent. Something else happens and you go to eighty percent. You know, and then you go back down when things are, are you're not, you know, all over the place or, or life is not taking over you over. It, so, it, yeah, it definitely fluctuates. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you for joining us today uh, for this incredible interview with this incredible uh, movie producer who's got a great story out. You guys have to see it. It's called Suicide Saints. Um, and we can't wait to see this movie. It's about mental illness. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you guys uh, again. You all have a good night. Thank you.